Hey guys, it's Nadine. So today, I'm going to be book reviewing the book, The Fiery Heart. The Fiery Heart is by Rochelle Mead. It is the fourth book in the Bloodline series. It is a great book, and you should really read it. Um, if you have read Vampire Academies, I recommend you read this because it's like a sequel, um, like a spin-off kind of thing. Um, if you haven't read Vampire Academy or Bloodlines, I really recommend you read both the, uh, both these series. They're really good. Um, Sean means an amazing writer, and you're going to really enjoy them. They're full of passion, hope, um, action, and just awesomeness. So, for all those people who don't want to be spoiled and are going to read these, you got to leave now because spoilers are coming up. So, yeah. Leave. Bye. Yeah, leave. If you like to be spoiled, I don't care. I don't like spoiling people. So, leave and read the books and then come back. Bye, guys. So, Fiery Heart. So, Fiery Heart, right when I got this book, I opened it up and I realized there was two POVs. I freaked out in the beginning because I was just like, oh my gosh, this can't be another Allegiant because Allegiant has two POVs and you guys know that ending. So right when I saw it, I'm like, please, it can't be something like that. Please, one of them, the, I don't want, like, I was freaking out. I was like, one of them might die. Like, there's two POVs. One of them is going to die or one, they're going to be separated and one of those two options happens and you know it. I'm glad it wasn't the first one, though. So yeah, um, I love the two POVs. I loved seeing from Adrian's point of view. It was really interesting. You saw that he, there was so much more to him. He wasn't just that bad attitude, um, badass kind of guy. He was so he was filled with passion, with hope, and with love. And um, he was so sweet. And you could see how much he cares for people and he loves people. Um, and it showed you like also through like Sydney, um, uh, Sydney's point of view. How much you know they loved each other and how much they're like each other's anchors. So in the book, uh, Adrian has a huge breakdown um, because of spirit, because spirit gets to him and he starts seeing Aunt Tatiana. And honestly, I don't think that's because of spirit. Well, yeah, I know it's because of spirit, but I think like he actually can see Aunt Tatiana. I think it might maybe come back in the next book. I don't know. It's just my opinion. Spirit really has gotten to him because he used it so much at court. Um, it was such a heartbreaking and passionate moment when Sydney comes and she starts crying and pounding on his chest and is like, I love you and like it just shows you how much she fears for him and how much she loves him you know and it was just I love that moment like it was an upsetting moment but it just showed you such a Sidrian moment I loved it um so I loved when they went to court uh it was really interesting I loved how like when everyone's asleep they got to be themselves they got to go out and everything but then they came and they, then they saw those guys that were Adrian's ex-friends um and they started talking about dabbling and I was like freaking out. I didn't really know what dabbling was until really Rose um, explained it. And when she did, I was like freaking out for uh, Sydney because Sydney was freaking out. And Sydney, I was like, oh my god, is she gonna actually like maybe break up with Adrian because of this and all this? But in the end, you realize that no, you know, this shows you how much Adrian has changed. Adrian doesn't do this anymore. Adrian never was the one who would initiate this kind of stuff. And um, we were like, she finally notices that he was on mood stabilizers at court, and she realizes, holy crap, he did this for me. It just shows you how much they like love each other. And we get into that car accident. I was like freaking out, you know. I'm like, nothing crazy has happened yet, you know. No Stigoi attacks, nothing like crazy. I was freaking out. I'm like, something like this might happen. But no, um, they were just stuck in a snowstorm, and they got they had sex, and honestly. Um, so sweet, and you could you just could see in that moment, Adrian's POV, how much he has changed from book two with Frostbite and Vampire Academy to where we are now. You know, he was like, you know, he's talking like, I don't deserve you, I don't deserve this, and um, it just shows you, like, wow, like, this is Adrian, the guy who's been with so many girls, the guy who, you know, so confident, he's so insecure and feels like he doesn't deserve her, and like, it just, wow, you know? One of my favorite uh, things in the book were her birthday. He was so sweet. You see how how sweet Adrian is, and he you know bakes her these cupcakes. He you know gets these girls to make him uh, dinner for her, and they just have that you know moonlight in the car kind of thing. And it was just so cute. But honestly, I realized they were becoming so sloppy, and they were all they were becoming like you know so careless, and you know like all the dangers. There were no dangers in the world. And I was like, guys, get yourself together. Um, so Zoe, let's speak of this girl. Zoe is so annoying. 
her and um, Sydney have dinner with their dad, and I can't even believe Zoe. Like everything that Sydney's done for you, you know, she's trying to protect you, and you go and basically go rat her out and be like, oh, Sydney's besties with vampires and vampires and all this and that. And it's like, why would you do that? You're such a bad sister. And just, ugh, I don't like Zoe. Everything was falling into place. You know, her and Adrian were like seeing each other more, despite. Zoe being annoying and everything. The whole inking and tattoo thing with uh, Trey, you know, it worked out. And then the whole Stragoy, um attack plan with Neil and Eddie, that even worked out. And speaking of that, I was like, what the hell? Are they crazy? Like, this, I honestly thought something bad was going to happen during that. It was so surprising that nothing did. They bring Jill and Long, and I was like, are you guys crazy? Guys, you know, you're supposed to be protecting her. What the hell? What the hell? But, you know, yay, they did it. And it proved that, you know, the whole, uh, the whole Stragoy, um, inking thing also works out too. So yes, everything's falling into place, everything's going well, everything's going good. And I knew, I knew shit was gonna happen. You know, it was, the book was coming to an end and I knew, I knew. Even from the beginning of the book, I knew she was gonna maybe get sent to re-education because it said like, re-education is looming, all, looming over her and blah, 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 blah. Before we get to, the, get to that, when she comes back from that story attack and goes to Adrian, I thought it was such a sloppy move, but it was so cute too. And um, Adrian, like, they had a moment where, like, he tasted a little bit of her blood because, like, her lips, like, got, like, like, he bit her lips by accident or something like that, I don't know. And she, they were both contemplating, but then they're like, no, they went back to making out or whatever. Uh, I was freaking out. I was like, what? Like, Sydney? Like, Sydney would never contemplate this. Like, this is so weird. Something that pissed me off was the fact that Sydney, she made this salt thing and it's worked out for everyone. It's worked out for Neil, it's worked out for Trey, and then she doesn't even use it on herself. Like, really? Come on, Sydney, get yourself together. But I'm really hoping the magic in her blood will suffice and will be enough to let her not be able to be brainwashed by these evil alchemists. Please, please, please. Chapter 21 and 22, I think they were beautifully written. Chapter 21, it was when in the end, Eddie comes and he's like, she tricked me, she tricked me, and we're us readers, like, what the fuck is he talking about? We're already freaking out because Sydney's late, and we're like, what the hell is happening? And then you go into chapter 22, and it goes back in time to, like, how it led up to that, and I thought it was such an intriguing chapter, well written, you shall need. So we realize there's an ambush, and of course, Zoe. Zoe did it. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Zoe was going to be her downfall. Zoe, she's a little bitch. Ugh, like what kind of sister are you? Warner at least, you know? She's like, oh, we should be sisters. We should go hang out. And then and she's all like, oh, you're not my sister. Just another alchemist or whatever. Like, oh, what a bad sister. Mm. So basically, I, like she tricks Eddie and Eddie leaves her. And it just, I'm freaking out here because we all know she's going to be tricking Eddie. But in the end, she did it because she loved him. And this book is so inspiring. It shows you true friendship. It shows you how much she loves these people despite everything she's learned, you know, about them. And just, oh, such a good book. And um, I can't believe um, Zoe did this because she found the luck phone. Like, and then, oh, Sydney. It was so not a Sydney. When, like, um, they were texting her, like, the ambush, you know, the alchemist was texting her from the luck phone. I'm like, Sydney, this is not you. You're, like, the organizer, responsible Sydney. This is not, um, you know, Adrian. You know Adrian lost it, you know. He was texting you from the other phone, like, a day ago. He would have texted you, hey, I found the phone. Or he would have, even the way... Um, the alchemist for texting her back wasn't like Adrian, of course, because it wasn't Adrian, and she wasn't even noticed. She was just all like, oh, he found the phone, yay! And I'm all like, Sydney, what is happening to you right now? What is happening to you? Like, it was horrible, like, the whole ambush. She ends up being in the car with her dad and her sister, and her dad is such an asshole. He actually, like, slaps her, like, what kind of bother are you? You comment about your children's weight. You never treat them like a father. Ugh, I don't like him. And then Zoe, honestly, I'm so disappointed in her. I never liked Zoe from the beginning. I knew she was going to be the downfall of this book. I knew she was going to be the one who was going to ruin Sydney, Sidrian. <clears throat> but yeah, um, in the end, the education is worse than I thought it was. What the hell? They put her in this, like, black room, freaking naked. Like, she's supposed to be reborn into Earth again or something. They're psychotic. Honestly, psychotic. I don't know what to expect for the next book. I'm really freaking out. It was so upsetting how like no one could get to her. It was so frustrating. No one could get to her through her dreams or her teacher couldn't get to her through her, um, you know, magic. And it was pissing me off. Like, someone get to Sydney. But in the second book, I mean, not the second book, in the next book, someone, obviously they're going to get to her. I don't know how she's going to break, um, break out. I'm really worried. I really hope it's not a Peter Katniss moment where, you know, 
uh, Sydney ends up coming out and she's gonna be brainwashed, she's gonna be scared of, you know, Adrian and not wanna be near him and stuff. It's gonna be like, really, come on, Michelle, maybe you're more creative than that. So I really hope it's not something like that. I'm really wondering how she's gonna break out. I know the crew is gonna probably help her and Adrian's gonna do whatever he can to help. But I feel like, you know, she could maybe do like a uh, invisibility spell and then like, you know, they'll like, whoa, where did she go? Open the door and then she could sneak out and leave. That'd be pretty awesome. That's just my imagination running wild. And I feel so bad for Adrian because he feels so helpless, helpless without spirit. And now his spirit's coming back, but you can see he's going to, through such despair. I just really hope he stays strong for Sydney and for us. Like, he can't, like, honestly, if he ends up, like, going and drinking and, like, washing all the stuff away through, like, alcohol, I'm going to be so upset with him. So hopefully he stays strong and gets himself together for Sydney and for Sidrian, you know? This book was really, really good and it was amazing. I can't believe I have to wait another four months for freaking Silver Shadows. Like, I am in the Maroi, you know, Stripoi, this kind of world. I need to be back in it. I love this book. It was such a, such a good book. Oh, honestly, such a good book. Anyway, tell me what you guys think is going to happen. Uh, what do you guys think is going to happen? Uh, recommend any books you think were good. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me know what were your favorite scenes. Mine, as I said, was like her birthday and like some of the court where they got to like be themselves and stuff. Um, just let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about Zoe because I'm pretty sure you guys think the same thing about Zoe as I do. She's a little bitch. She is. See you guys. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.